Now with parentheses and the Boolean operators, we can construct equivalent ways of saying things. Let's look at those now. Well, there are lots of ways of saying things, and there are a lot of sentences which, because of their form, are true or false under the same conditions, and we call these logical equivalences. Here's the easiest one. Not not a, which is just the same as a. For instance, if I say, I'm not not giving a lecture right now, that's just the same as I'm giving a lecture right now. Now, you might think that there's a lot more going on with double negation in English. You might think, for instance, that I'm not unhappy to see you expresses something a bit different from I'm happy to see you. The first is a weaker claim. It says something a little less friendly than the second. If I'm happy to see you, I'm just straightforwardly happy to see you. If I'm not unhappy to see you, it doesn't express the same excitement. So in English, we wouldn't take these to be equivalent, but in FOL, we do. FOL is not concerned with the shades of meaning that go between sentences like these. As above, we take them to be equivalent. I'm raising this only because if it seems to you like something is lost in translating double negation into straightforward no negation, then you're not wrong. But FOL is an artificial language, and so we're entitled to be a bit artificial. Next up are the so-called de Morgan's laws. These are named after a 19th century British logician named Augustus de Morgan, but actually, people have been aware of these rules for some time now. They're at least as old as the Middle Ages, and they were worked out explicitly in the writings of a medieval friar named William of Ockham, whom probably most of you know through the notion of Ockham's razor, that the simplest answer is best. Here's the first of these rules. If the sentence A and B is false, then either A is false, or B is false, or both. And if the sentence a and B is true, then either A is true or B is true or both. Let's see how this works by putting it in a truth table. So the truth table for the first of these is just the straightforward one with conjunction, which is to say it's only true when both A and B are true and false otherwise. But notice that the main connective is actually the negation here. So we flip all the truth values of the sentences involved in this one. Moving to the right-hand side of this equivalence, we can write out the truth values for the negated terms, which will just be the opposite of the truth values over here. So A will be false, false, true, true, and not B will be false, true, false, true. Now we know that the main connective here is the disjunctive sign, so the truth of the whole sentence requires that at least one of the disjuncts be true, which is false in the first case, and true in the rest. Now compare these truth conditions for the main connectives of both. They're just the same. And this is what we mean when we say that it's equivalent. And we can symbolize this using this bidirectional arrow here. There's one more De Morgan rule to look at before this is over. So this tells us that the negation of the disjunctive sentence A or B is equivalent with the conjunction of negation A and negation B. And again, in order to see why this is, we can put this into a truth table. Incidentally, there's a straightforward way of writing out T and F for truth tables. You can make one of the sentence letters TF, TF, which gets you four. The next one, TT, FF. If we had a third one, say, before A and B, call it C, we would write B as TF, TF, down eight lines of alternating T and F. A would be TT, FF, TT, FF, so alternating double T and Fs, and then C would be four Ts and four Fs, and that guarantees that we get all the truth values possible. We'll discuss this more in greater detail later on. Just to make clear, we'll write out the truth values for the disjunctive sentence that's within these parentheses. But again, notice that negation is the main connective, so we flip these. So because A is true, true, false, false, it will be false, false, true, true. And because B is true, false, true, false, it will be false, true, false, true. Now our main connective is this conjunctive symbol here. And we know that conjunction requires both of the sentences to be true. So we can pretty straightforwardly write this out. It's only true at the bottom here. And again, if we compare the truth values for these two main connectives, we see that they're both true and false under the same conditions which is what it means to say that they're logically equivalent. I find this de Morgan's rule easier than the other to think about in English. For instance, suppose I say, I'm going to the movies or I'm going bowling, and I negate that. It's not the case that either I'm going to the movies or I'm going bowling or both. Then it's easy to see how that's equivalent with I'm not going to the movies and I'm not going bowling. So this de Morgan's rule is a little bit easier. But the takeaway here is that A is logically equivalent with B if and only if a and B have the same truth conditions. And this is what it means to say that the columns underneath their main connective have the same pattern of T's and F's.